Uh, you're not going to pay attention to me. You're going to be looking at the dog, right? <laughs> From what I heard, this could be the first time any dog's been on stage doing a TEDx talk, so I'll let him start. <laughs> anyway, 13 years ago, I came down with what is my uh, seasonal sinus infection. With a nose this big, it's hard not to get a sinus infection. Um, I went to the doctor, got my dose of antibiotics, and was told, come back if it hurts anymore. Well, December 8th, 2005, it was killing me. Um, the pain was excruciating. I was not really feeling 100%. And when, thank you, um, <laughs> I called the doctor, told him what my symptoms were. He said, get to the hospital ASAP. It turned out to be anything but a sinus infection. My name is Albert Rizzi, and this is my trusted steed, Vaughn, the Wunderdog. Um, and 13 years ago, we got another invitation of sorts uh, to join this club of luminaries, very distinguished people. I don't know why they wanted me, but they did. <laughs> um, it included luminaries, dignitaries, notables, global mover and shakers, celebrities, people like Gabrielle Giffords, Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, Sir Richard Branson, Michael J. Fox, and now me, and friends and colleagues like Tana Gears, um, Richard um, Kelly, Jeff Weldon, and Jonathan Hermes. One thing all of us have in common is we are collectively called print disabled. We're not able to process print in uh, the quote unquote normal way. Um, and honestly, I have never felt more empowered and more privileged and more blessed to be in the company of these people, and I have never had a vision more clear for all things possible. So how did I get here? As I told you 13 years ago, I got this invitation. I was 195 athletic pounds. I had 20-20 vision. And instead of having a, a sinus infection, five spinal taps later, it was meningitis, fungal meningitis, a lethal form of meningitis with a low mortality rate. <laughs> they even sent a priest in to read last rites, and my mother, armed with a very colorful vocabulary that would make a sailor blush, something she handed down to me, um, invited the priest to leave the room. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I survived. On January 6, 2006, I came out of a drug-induced morphine haze and had a bit of a spiritual awakening and found that I was totally blind and 120 pounds. I looked like a Holocaust victim. My dad immediately went to that father-son pep talk. I think I wasn't having it, really. I wasn't in a good mood to hear that crap. So, uh, he gave me a dose of his paternal medicine and immediately launched into reminding me that my mother and he raised this boy to be a man who could face challenges head on. He reminded me that I was raised to not be a quitter. He let me know that it totally sucks to be you, but... <laughs> 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 if we could trade places with you, we would, but we can't. So you need to be the son we raised. You need to be the man you've become. You always ask us to give 100%. Now you've got to exemplify what that looks like. He asked me, actually he told me I had to. <laughs> I had to rise like a phoenix from the ashes. I had to be the better for this circumstance, for this challenge, for this way of seeing um, I had to be a man who just happened to be blind and not be defined or, as I say, dislabeled as a blind person. <sighs> Most powerful thing he's ever done for me. And again, I have never felt more blessed and more privileged to see the way that I do. Helen Keller once said, when one door closes, another door opens and I'm gonna kind of paraphrase, but I think I can do this, that we look so 
longingly and regretfully towards the door that closed. We don't even see the one in front of us that's opened. I now go through every door that opens before me, and I try not to look back at the one that's closed because there was a period at the end of that sentence, and that's a good thing. Change is a good thing. Moving through life, door after door, mm, good thing. Um, just who the hell knew there were so many freaking doors? <laughs> <laughs> now, I would have to think that the luminaries behind me and uh, the dignitaries who I mentioned or you saw up on the screen had to have looked at that door that was opened and took it with stride and said, yes, we're leaders. We're forward-thinking individuals, and we're going through that door, and we're not going to worry about the past because we don't want it to color our present or impact our future. So I took their lead, and I went <laughs> blindly into that good night. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you all to take a leap of faith with me and understand that what happened to me could happen to you. And I'm here to tell you, it's doable. As long as you have the right tools that promote your ability, infinite possibilities will always be yours. So now, the dignitaries that I mentioned before, anybody notice some of them? How many of you put your hands up? I mean, I'm blind here, people. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good. How many? Yeah? All right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's really great when you go into kindergarten school and do that, and the kid's are like, we're not allowed to make noise. Oh, yeah, this is a whole different game, kids. <laughs> they love it. So, um, I do, yeah, no, no, stop ad-libbing. So, we... I would think you would all agree that these people, these movers and shakers, should not have their hands tied in executing in life. Yet, so often that happens to people with a print disability. Simple programmatic glitches in codes that are written just aren't working right. And it really complicates your life. Uh, imagine if you weren't able to execute in life. Flick of a switch, lights out. Nothing works for you. Can't pay a bill, you get pissed. Can't point, click, and have food delivered, you get pissed. I think I spent the first few years being very, very pissed. And then I took action. What we do at My Blind Spot is we work to create access to knowledge, and we educate people on what's possible. And I'm here to tell you it's very possible for us, as a community, as individuals, to continue to roll through life, whether it's in a wheelchair, seeing things a different way, using a cane, assistive devices, or a beautiful yellow dog. <laughs> we work at my blind spot to open doors of opportunity and digital equity and authentic inclusion. We sit down with CIOs, CTOs, C-suite period, IT professionals, engineers, designers, programmers, developers. Uh, we speak with people from the boardroom to the mailroom about authentic inclusion, digital equity, um, how important it is to understand that there are 1.4 billion people, B, larger than the population of China with a disability in the world today, 2.3 billion friends and family, $8 trillion worth of discretionary spending power. So it's not just the warm social conscious thing to do anymore, it's good business. If we code and check for digital equity, the simple hooks that go into or baking into the design of a digital platform open doorways of opportunity for all the luminaries that were mentioned before as well as our young leaders coming up behind me and any other future Albert Rizzi who might stumble into this community and find that his life or her life was disabled. I woke up and computers, disabled. Writing a check, you'd think that'd be a good thing, disabled. Not being able to pay my mortgage, disabled. Not fun getting foreclosure notices. Yet I was the one being called disabled.
I don't want you to dislabel me anymore. People should not be called disabled. We disable a bomb, we disable a car, we disable engines, we disable a computer. We don't disable people. Thank you. Thank you. So this has been my calling, and it really has been a calling. It's been a divine experience being able to speak intelligently and outwardly about the opportunities that exist to help people like me, and eventually, all you all, as they say down here. <laughs> um, one in five of us has a disability. One in three of us know somebody who does. All of you out there are temporarily able. <laughs> you're getting older, you're gonna have glasses, you're gonna have a wheelchair or a cane, so soon you're gonna join this club. You are gonna be members extraordinaire. And I hope you remember this talk because being blind does have its upsides. You get to read people in braille when you go to the bar. Nice. So, one of the things I would, I'm glad that that was, a, that was a slow uptake, people. Come on, wake up. Um, I would just like to say, in closing, thank you for having me here today. Thank you for giving me this platform. Thank you for having my trusted steed here with me. And I just want you to know with confidence that if I've done anything today, I want to motivate you to believe in yourselves, believe in your own ability, regardless of where you are in life's journey. Rise to your challenge. My challenge is blindness. What was yours? Think about it. Take it head on. Nothing is impossible. Everything is possible with the access to the right tools and you own focus on possibilities. So when you get this invitation, and trust me, you will, to join this club of dignitaries and luminaries, I would ask that if you get the choice to dance or sit it out, I hope you dance, and I hope you dance like your life depended on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.